You know, 175 New York. We have some problems over here right now. We might have a hijack over here, two of them. American 11, are you trying to call? The cockpit is not answering the phone. Our number one is in staff, and our five is in staff. United 9-3, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? He did not land. The carnage inflicted by those four hijacked airliners a full 20 years ago was felt nowhere more keenly or cruelly than on the New York brokerage firm Cantor Fitzgerald. Cantor occupied the 101st through 105th floors of One World Trade Center. And on the morning of September 11th, 659 Cantor employees were killed. That is every Cantor employee who came to work and was at the New York office at the time. CEO Howard Lutnick was not there because he was taking his son to his first day of kindergarten. Somehow, amazingly, Cantor resumed its business along with the rest of Wall Street just two days later. Rebuilding, though, uh, took years. Lutnick started with Cantor itself. He didn't end it there, though, because for five years, Cantor paid a quarter of its profits to the families of the workers who were killed and paid for their health care for 10 years. And now on each 9-11 anniversary, the firm invites celebrities to work the phones and 100% of the revenues on that day go to charity. I can't imagine what every anniversary has been like for you, and especially this particular one. Well, I, you know, we just, uh, it's so, it's a tough time of year for me. I mean, there's no other way to say it. We, uh, you know, we, so I stay focused. Uh, I need to be together with the families of uh, my friends and all of those that we lost. Uh, we read their names. Um, we talk about them. We remember them. But we're all, we're all together. And then, uh, and then that night, you know, we have charity day. Uh, I spent all day raising money for the families and, uh, and now for 150 other organizations. And then that, that night I go out with my best friend's widow, uh, which I always do every September 11th. How do you remember your own brother, Gary? Because it's one thing to, you know, pay tribute to, to all of the employees you lost, which is simply massive. I think I misspoke saying over 300, it's 658. But there's Gary. That's your, that's your brother. Well, my, my sister, uh, my sister, my brother, and I were really close. We lost our parents when I was uh, 16, and my dad was killed when I was 18 when the nurse gave him uh, 100 times a dose of chemotherapy. So my sister, my brother, and I were really, really tight, and the loss of my brother was, was devastating. So what we did is we tried to turn his memory into something fundamental. So we started the Cannon Fitzgerald Relief Fund, which my sister runs, so she could touch each of the families and my sister wears a, a necklace of a broken heart around her neck and, and she connects with all of the other families. And then I just tried to raise as much money as I possibly could trying to piece this, you know, smashed company back together again to take care of the families or those we lost. And I was able to talk to them and I was able to communicate with them because I was just one of them. So I always felt that my way of communicating with the families was really on standing on my brother's shoulders. It, it is, his being part of that group allowed me to talk to them, allowed me to build a, a community with them, allowed me to rebuild this company. And now we have 12,000 employees and, uh, and we are an incredible organization that is built really on the shoulders uh, of my brother and his wife. So that's the, the personal and the professional part of Howard Lutnick on this 20 year anniversary. But then there's the, um, the average American, you and I are both average Americans. We both had a profound experience um, on that day. And then we deal with this anniversary every year. Do you look at this, this day 20 years later and say, where are we? Have we backslid? Are we any better? Have we, did we become better? Did we squander any of that beautiful national unity that we had in the ensuing months and years after 9-11? Like, where's your headspace when it comes to who we are as a nation? You know, that, that day I was uptown with my, uh, with my son dropping into kindergarten. And then I went right down uh, to the building to try to, to see if I could help. And, and I was literally standing underneath uh, the North Tower when the South Tower collapsed. So I was, I was literally engulfed in that, in that black and felt just like you did, only I was, I was unfortunately, I was you know, right, right underneath it and thought I had died from that black. And, and so I, I felt 
you know, I felt really strongly that we should go and, and get the bad guys. And, uh, and I was, I was really, um, you know, I, I was excited that, uh, you know, the American military went out and, uh, and sought to avenge what happened to us and to protect us, create uh, homeland security and do all these things to make us better. And, you know, now it's 20 years later. And I think, you know, we all say never forget, but, you know, I, I sort of feel like it's, it's fading, you know, that, that we're not protecting ourselves against terrorists in the same way we did before, because it's 20 years and, and people just let it slide a little bit. So I, I feel like the world is, is forgetting a little bit and, uh, and it is allowing terrorists to sort of grow and build. And, and uh, you know, it's tough. It, it's tough to be 20 years mm -hmm. later and to feel like we're not, uh, we're not as vigilant, we're not as strong, we're not protecting ourselves as, as much as I thought we would do. But I guess that's just human nature. Well, then there's the other side of it, too, right? As I'm assuming every year after 9-11, you know, some networks played the whole broadcast day. Um, they would replay it. And I don't know for you, but for me, it was really hard. I couldn't watch it. And so I almost strangely, paradoxically welcomed the dwindling of news coverage. But when you put it in those words, now I feel bad for, you know, not just sort of pushing through it, weathering through it. Do you sometimes feel please, I don't need to see another story. It's too painful. Well, I, you know, I, <laughs> I would agree with you. Of course, uh, it feels that way. And when I, when I see those pictures, even when I'm watching your program and I see those pictures, you know, it just, it causes my insides to just sort of rip apart because when that first plane hit that first tower, those are, those are my friends. You know, that's my brother. That's my best friend. We had a rule at the company. We only want to work with people that we like. So when we'd interview mm -hmm. people, we would decide, are these people going to be our friends? Because we spend more time with people we work with than, than often you spend with your family. And so these were all of our friends, and, uh, and it's ripping. But what I try to do is keep my head down. We have this uh, spectacular charity day where all of my employees, they waive their day's pay, and, uh, and we ask our clients to do as much business as they can. We have celebrities come and help us. And, and we've raised on average $12 million a year, which we give to about 150 different organizations. Cause that's a good way to, for me to spend my day. You know, I can't, I can't figure out how otherwise to spend my day. Otherwise I just want to stick my head under the, uh, the pillow or stick it in an oven. I completely understand and I fully concur. And you know what? I like interviewing people I like, so I'm glad that you were here today. Thanks for doing this. Well, thanks for all you do and, and what you put up with that day and, and what David did. It, those were those were incredible stories. And being down there with you that day was, uh, you know, you can never, it never comes out of you. You know, it's just in you. And you you knew what happened to the people in the, in the building. And, uh, you know, it's just, you just want to remember them and keep them alive in your heart. Like I said, I can't uh, tell you enough how much I appreciate this on this, um, you know, very sad anniversary, but also very eye-opening for us as we look forward. Thanks, Howard. Thank you.